Hey, it's Brent. In this video, we'll cover final tier 4 9R tractor transmission settings. Let's get started. First thing we want to talk about is where we're going to access those transmission settings. We really have three options to get to those transmission settings. The first one being on our main default tractor run page, we're going to have an option to choose our transmission mode. From here, we'll be able to choose our full auto custom or manual, and I'll get into those here in a bit. The other place that we'd have to access those transmission settings would be under our menu, machine settings, and transmission button. From here, we can access all our transmission settings as well as choose between those modes. Finally, the last place we can access those settings is from these soft keys down here on the bottom of the display. We can find the one that looks like our transmission button, press it, and it's also going to access those transmission settings. From here, we want to talk about our different transmission modes to start. So we've got full auto, custom, and manual. Our full auto mode is going to be exactly what it says it is. It's going to automatically control speeds by shifting gears and changing NGR, engine RPM as required by the tractor's load. Not a lot of settings that we can change here to customize it or, or make it do the different things we want it to do. It's going to be pretty well full auto uh, just to be as efficient as it can be. If we want to customize those settings or we're not happy with how full auto is running, uh, we can change over to that custom mode. In either full auto or custom mode, one of the things that you'll notice on the tractor when you use your shift lever to shift gears either to shift up or down, you don't actually shift gears. What you're doing is you're changing the set speed of the tractor. So if I shift up with the lever, you'll see on my right-hand corner post that my speed is just changing. It's not actually gonna make the tractor shift gears unless it needs to based upon load and speed desired. If I wanna dial in my speed a little bit closer uh, than just making these big increment changes, I can use the scroll wheel on the shift lever and dial that down to the speed I wanna use in the field. So if I'm not happy with the full auto settings, uh, I can use this custom mode if I like the way the transmission shifts on its own by me just selecting speeds all the time. In that case, I've got different modes that I can select. I've got different transmission floors that I can change as well as some custom settings. The first thing we'll talk about here is these transmission uh, settings based upon engine speed. So I've got an eco off and an eco on RPM floor. Basically what I'm saying there is how low do I want to allow the tractor RPM to go while I'm in the field. Uh, we've got an eco on and an eco off mode, so you can choose between the two of them by pressing either the eco button here on the screen or the eco button that's on your throttle uh, that you can press with your thumb. So choosing between the two, if I'm on my non-eco, eco off, maybe what I'm going to use when I'm in the field, I can select that button and I can change my engine RPM, keeping in mind that I need to maintain enough engine RPM so I have the hydraulic flow that I need. From there, if I decide that I want to have a custom RPM for either headlands or road travel or something like that, I can choose the eco button and I can also change that eco on speed so I can quickly choose between two engine RPM floors. So no matter what, my RPM isn't going to drop below these settings. Um, but it's still going to be able to raise up all the way to either full throttle or to where my field cruise is set. So once I'm happy with those settings, I want to jump into these custom settings. These custom settings in this 9R tractor, I'm going to have droop and I'm going to have load anticipation. So droop is, is really a fancy way to tell you how much the tractor is going to pull down before it shifts. So we look at this droop, we're going to have a range from all the way to the top at 26% to all the way to the bottom of 14%. Really, if you look at this droop number, this is how hard the tractor is gonna work before it shifts. So that being said, if you start somewhere in the middle and you think that the tractor needs to shift more, uh, it's pulling down too far and is not able to recover well, you would set that droop lower. If you'd like the tractor to pull down more, pull harder before it shifts and shift less, you'd set that droop number higher. Beyond that, you've got load anticipation. You'll also see this in our IVT E23 video. That load anticipation on this 9R, since we don't have a rear hitch or a PTO, um, I'm only going to have a hydraulic load anticipation, but the function is very much the same. What load anticipation is going to do for you is when the tractor sees, uh, in this case, an SCV activated, it's automatically going to ramp the RPMs up to anticipate a load looking for potentially a, a tillage tool to lower into the ground or a seeding tool to lower in the ground. And it's going to 
increase those RPMs for as long as the SCV is active. So if I've got a time detent of 10 seconds, it'll do it for 10 seconds. If I'm in a constant detent situation, like a fan on an air cart or vacuum blowers on a planter, um, it's going to increase the RPMs the entire time. So if you're setting up your efficiency manager and you're not happy with the way the RPMs are being controlled and it's never coming down to your floor, take a look at this setting. Uh, in the case of a constant hydraulic running all the time, we want to turn load anticipation off. Finally, from there, uh, we can set our F1 and F2 speeds. Uh, we're able to do that by pressing the buttons on the armrest pictured on the top left-hand corner of the screen uh, in your video. So we can change those F1 and F2 speeds by pressing the button on the armrest and we can dial those speeds in. So maybe on when I'm running this machine, as I'm seating, I'm gonna turn on the headland at 4.4 miles an hour, and I'm gonna seed at six miles an hour. In that case, I dial them both down, and when I come to the headland, I'll be able to press that one button, and when I get out of the headland, I'm turned around and ready to go again, I can press two, and it's gonna to toggle between those two speeds, as you can also see as indicated on the corner post. Finally, if we want to run the tractor in a manual mode, meaning when I pull the shift lever forward or back uh, for the plus or minus, the tractor itself is actually going to shift gears. Um, it'll run much like a, a 30 series tractor or an interim tier 4 9R tractor. I can change to a manual mode. That manual mode is going to give me that opportunity to control my gear and my engine RPM unless I'm in efficiency manager mode. So in that case, all of the settings are the same between my eco on off uh, all of my droop and load anticipation settings are going to remain the same, uh, but when I use that shift lever, it's actually going to shift my gears up or down, uh, and my engine RPMs are going to be completely controlled by throttle position. But if I want to use efficiency manager through the field um, for, to control my engine RPM and shift for me automatically, I can still press that one or press that two button, and I'm still going to be able to use efficiency manager. You also see the forward start gear down on the bottom. Uh, you'll be able to use those for your efficiency manager. When you press the clutch in, efficiency manager doesn't kick out, uh, but it should go back to that forward start gear so that when you push in the clutch and let it back out that your tractor is going to go to a lower gear uh, as to not lug it when you take off again. One nice thing to note about efficiency manager is if you are in a situation where you're using the efficiency manager and, and you feel like you need to shift down or you're in a difficult spot or situation, if you shift down or shift up, the tractor is going to take over control again in that manual mode. So if I'm in the situation where I feel like I, I need to have more engine RPMs or I need full control of the tractor, if I shift down one gear, it's going to increase my engine RPMs, potentially increase my speed by just a little bit depending on where I'm running at. Um, but I'm going to have higher RPMs and higher torque to get me through that situation. Once I'm through it, I can press that one or two again to resume efficiency manager. For more questions regarding Efficiency Manager, refer to your operator's manual or your local RDO equipment. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Connect with us by subscribing to Precision Ag Answers on YouTube and following RDO Equipment Company on social media. Visit rdoequipment.com for more Precision Ag resources and solutions.